sometimes I look around this porch, and it's a very small porch. You know, and there's some weird rules that you have to do too. You can't have it like grow too high or do things. So I get into trouble all the time about, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that. I'm like, oh, come on, <laughs> please. It's just a plan. That's all it is. Let it grow. But anyways, I look at this and I think, wow. Boy, God has blessed me. You know, look at these plants grow. Or, you know, man, look at how beautiful it is, you know. And I laugh because, you know, I can go into a, a store, you know, down the street and price a plant that, you know, might be like some of the ones I have. And they're like 30 bucks or 50 bucks or, you know, some crazy amount of money. And I could never <coughs> afford that. You know, or even if I could, I wouldn't spend it. But God has given me, you know, these little plants, you know, that I can take a, a little one, you know, and grow it. <laughs> I don't think it's here now. I think I moved it already. Into a big one. <laughs> you know, and then I take a start off it. And I grow a big one. You know, sometimes I think that's what the church ought to be, you know, is that... Maybe we shouldn't be growing such one big one as growing a bunch of little ones and let them grow up into be big ones. But one of the things I've discovered is that the more that I try to hang on to things, the less that I'm able to be satisfied with them is that I wind up with a house full of junk rather than give away what I should have given away, you know, when I had the opportunity. And I don't know about you, but for me, you know, I think that it's easier to give away what someone sees they want in your house and let God bring something new in that you could be blessed with and then maybe give that away too because sometimes it's better to give than it is to hoard or to hang on to because I know right now my wife and I are going through a process where we're just you know we can't take it anymore we're like crammed full of junk that we've accumulated that we thought we needed or wanted at the time and Went to a used store and said, oh, that's a good deal. Let's buy it. You know, just like, <laughs> now let's get rid of it. <laughs> and the older I get, the closer we get to the Lord's return, the more that I realize that I need to get rid of stuff. You know, I, I don't need to keep stuff. I need to keep giving stuff away. You know, and the reality is, is that God wants us to be like that, to be always giving rather than keeping and hoarding or saying, ah, mine, me, mine, I. You know, and I don't know if you'll ever be that way because I know in America it's the tendency to get rather than to give, to keep, you know, and then give something that you have two of to someone or three of them to someone, but not really to give that which you care the most about. But that was the way I was raised as a burning and Christian was that whatever I loved the most, I gave away. Because in my early days in being a Jesus freak, I was taught that God loved his son the most, so he gave the most precious gift he had. And I wanted my life to be like Jesus, so I did that. And I wound up with nothing. <laughs> I was actually homeless at one time even because of that. But God never abandoned me, and he loved that enthusiasm about me and that joy, so he gave me throughout my life always his blessing because I was always wanting to be like him always wanting to give the best that I had to him and to give the best that I had away to others that they would grow up to know him even more than I did and in a lot of ways that's what these little videos are about in devotional and devotional is to help you to discover Jesus in more of a way in your life than I have ever experienced in mine and there's some pretty miraculous things that's happened in my life so I hope you know him more than I do today because me I'm just a sinner man <laughs> Grace, woo, you know, but other than that, you know, you need lots of work. So in God Calling, which is why I read so many devotionals, <laughs> give abundantly, feel that you are rich, have no mean thought in your heart, of love, of thought, of all you have, give, give, and give. You are followers of the world's greatest giver. Give of time of personal ease and comfort, of rest, of fame, of healing, of power, of sympathy, of all these and many more. Learn this lesson and you'll become a great power to help others and do mighty things. 
someone asked me, am I, you know, prideful about having like 60 blogs, which really there's more than that, or eight networks, and there's probably more than that, but, you know, and that somehow I become some kind of egotist that, you know, I'm like, oh, you think you're so special, and it's like, uh, no, I just give what I got, you know, and because so many people poured in so much, I just pour back out what I got. Or like if I'm on the internet, if I get something, I give it. You know, it's like, you know, quick, pass it off, pass it around, get a spark going, see it all around. You know, and I, I see so many valuable things on the ministry of the internet that I say, oh boy, people be blessed by this. Oh, pass it on, give it to someone. Here, since they, they don't, they have a page that's, you know, only Christians would go to, then let's put it over here where Christians don't go to. Or let's put it over here where Christians might go to. Or let's put it over here where non-Christians would be blessed by it. Or let's put it over here so that everyone can see it. And so, I kind of like it. You redistribute or distribute things. I mean, they call it aggregate. And I run a lot of aggregate stuff. But at the same time, I share what I care about. And in doing so, that is why I have so much in some ways of ministry things because I just wanted to go out just wherever people are you know if you're onto some you know tiny dinky site you know and you find something and there's a link that's me guess what it's not because I'm like really dinking around on that site I just wanted it to be there too and then somewhere on a big site wanted it to be there too I wanted it to go out I wanted it to be touched because you see God is there wherever you are either on the internet or you know in real life or cyber life or any life God is there and I want people to recognize that God is everywhere already and that you're just going and participating with him and sharing the joy and the love that you have in relationship with him daily as you walk through your day whether it be on the internet or Facebook or texting or or whatever you're doing you know and God's there. You can't hide from Him. So you might as well have a relationship with Him so He can help you if you're struggling in some ways like with either sexting or porno or some sin that's caught you up, you know, and you're trapped in some way. God can bring you out of it. Just recognize that where you're at, in it, He's there and sees it. He's aware of it because He's in you. So deal with it with Him and you'll find you'll be free from it. Otherwise, you're going to keep repeating the same cycle over and over again, thinking you're hiding from God or trying to ignore Him, and God is there. So, the reality is just be real with God, and in everything you've experienced, share it with others. Because that's what will bring many people, many people, not everyone, but many people into the kingdom of God. Because then people will see that God is real because you're being real. That's all Jesus wants from you, is just to be real with Him today. Just be real. And then give it away.